All right, folks, let's get started here. Josh, thank you very much for joining us. we got a great topic to dig into, and I'll let you ride and roll. And folks, remember, messages, comments, thoughts, we monitor Zoom very closely, and we'll bring your, bring your comments out. we got a great group here. We can share a lot, so don't hesitate to jump on in. Let's do it. All yours, Josh. All right, good deal. Well, thanks, everybody, for showing up. Uh, this is definitely a passion topic for me. I've become a fan of hiring over the last 20 years as I had the opportunity slash challenge to do a lot of it and definitely some hard lessons learned. And the way I learned those lessons was just treating it like a product and really evaluating what was and wasn't working and continuously refining the process and trying to understand and try different things that I thought could help me and our team do a better job of hiring in the best people. Because as a leader, I firmly believe this is the most important skill that you can have mm -hmm. because you are only going to be as good as your team. That's your job as a leader is to build and empower the strongest team possible. And that starts with the people that you hire. Unfortunately, the most common mistake that I see with hiring is people being just lazy. Mm -hmm. and mailing it in and expecting it to just like be magic that people just are going to understand fast, exactly. Fast. Yeah. It's just, and they don't want to invest the time and it's really the return on the investment is so, so massive. Uh, and just, just like starting at the job descriptions that are out there, people just, Oh, Hey, there's one out on SharePoint or in Google drive or in my, PC or whatever it is, and they just copy and paste it and throw it up there. And it didn't work before. So it's likely not going to work again, but it was easy to just grab that one. Or maybe someone else wrote one, maybe your predecessor that was in the role prior to you had had one and HR just uses that. And you're just like, sure, that'll work. It doesn't. Isn't it funny how the hiring side thinks nothing of the job description, but the person wanting the job, that's the first thing they want to see. They're going to exactly. dig into it and look through it and almost take that as Bible. Yes. So that's exactly why what I do is I try and write the job description I would want to see that would make me click on it. Mm -hmm. So the way I do that, number one, is I just search around for my job or a parallel job or a job similar to the one that I'm trying to hire and find ones that excite me that I like, Oh, I think I would like to work for this crew because there's something that grabs you and then understand what grabs you and gets you to want to know more about that job. Then when you have that understanding of the things that trigger you start to weave those into your write up about what the job is. Like what's some things that catch you? You can say uh, it off the top, top of your head. I, I look for big challenges. So I want to know that the company knows they have a big challenge, that this role is going to be a big challenge, and that it's going to play a key part of the outcome in success of the company, because that's what I'm looking for. Like, give me something big and scary to dive into that, you know, maybe some folks have said, you know, I don't think you can make that happen. And then that's the thing that really fires me up. Because you might if, you might see a job you like, it's all right up your alley that can actually stretch you. But if it's kind of maintenance, you wouldn't be so, yeah, you would right. be it's, kind it's, of, not that. Right. And you can feel the passion from a company in that description about the job. You can tell if it's just that lazy, oh, copy and paste. And it's basically a checklist of, requirements are you know 85 lines long and there's MS so Word. many yeah that microsoft that, office yeah, exactly yeah just ridiculous things like that um that they're probably good communication skills yeah all of the above <laughs> and there probably uh isn't a single human out there that actually is an expert at all of those things so um that's another key is making sure that they understand what is realistic or not what happens when people are hiring for new roles is they create this unicorn that actually doesn't exist because they don't understand the role and they wonder why it can never be filled and it can never be filled because no one is comfortable clicking like yes i can do all of those things so the other thing that you do is once you come up with what you think looks great for that role 
put it in front of the people in your company that are already in that role and ask them what they think. Because it really doesn't matter if me as the CXO think this description is really exciting because I'm not the target that we're after. So I try and find the target within the company and say, hey, is this something that you would say like, a, this company knows what they're talking about. B, I kind of dig the culture and C, yeah, that sounds like a problem I'd want to solve. If it meets those things, um, then you're in a really good space. But don't don't think you actually have the answer. Try and get as close to your customer as possible. And your customer is every person out there that is looking for an exciting role and what is going to get them to click on it. And your also- Customers, everyone out there looking for an exciting role. That's a- we forget, we forget that a lot. Like we should be selling us. So we get if, the best of the best talent. If, if you want the best, then you have to do that. If you want middle of the road, then write a middle of the road job description. It's that simple. So sometimes people, I don't know if you're going to get into this, but the cultural <laughs> side, how do you, have you have any things that you use to spell out the culture side that doesn't seem too trite or too contrived or too, yeah, same old, same old. Yeah. It's culture to me is what you permit and what you promote. Mm -hmm. So it really is about the things you promote within your culture of this is, this is who we are. And it can't be ping pong tables, work hard, play hard. It can't be things like that. It has to be a demonstrable thing that shows this is who we are. And we celebrate people that operate like this because people want to work with the best. That's another key piece is yes, the job has to be cool, but also are the people good? Are they yeah. going to help me grow? Is this going to be a part of my future? And I'm going to look back and say, man, am I glad I clicked on that link? And that's part of the culture and how they grow people, how they invest in people, how they just support people. Just is, is it actually a people first organization? And that's something that, you know, can be squishy. And a lot of people will put things on a job description or listing that will make it sound like they actually operate like that. But you have to be sure that you can prove it during the hiring process. So if you're going to put stuff like that, don't put fluff in there. Because if you put fluff in there, you're going to get called out and rightfully so. So mm -hmm. make sure or, it's actually or just people that just you do. Won't, people will just say no at some point. Right. The thing right. I coach folks on during that process is always take it to offer. So if you <laughs> if you're not doing your job right and get people really fired up, you're going to get good people taking to the offer and just saying no. Yeah. ultimately, because you should take it to offer if you can um, and wasting your time, but you're not, you haven't done your job right in firing up folks, getting them excited about it, wanting them to be there instead of just saying, okay, this is one of my four choices. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what you should feel as a candidate is you should feel that enthusiasm and excitement in the description, but in every step along the hiring process. And in part two of this that we're going to, when is part two scheduled? Do we have that scheduled yet? Yeah, I'll tell you, right? Keep going. I'll let everybody okay. know. Let's just check my schedule out here real quick. Yeah. One of the things that is going to be important is having that consistent feeling throughout the process. And I May actually, 2nd, by the way. Okay, cool. So May 2nd, come back. We're going to talk about how you treat it like a sales pipeline and understand where and why people are dropping out. So maybe to David's point, they make it all the way to the offer and then they all bail. So yep. what are you doing wrong in that process? Like that's clearly the the, the issue. So we'll spend a bunch of time there. Um, but that's something, again, you have to understand where you're failing and start at the top, which is a job description. <laughs> and, and you might not be getting people clicking and maybe there's a reason why, or maybe the candidates are coming in, don't even come close to matching what you're trying to look for. It's the job description. So you have to start. There. <laughs> exactly. The, yeah. That is the entry point to your company. That is the very first touch point they have with you and your company. So don't be lazy. Don't just like float it out there and hope. Unfortunately, I a, too many um, people a, do that. I have a consulting client who in the part of the job description put deeper down into it that a, a, a 
cover leather was required and this had to be in the cover leather mm. just to test out to make sure that people were deeply reading his description right and he wanted people who had that type of intent mm -hmm. because he didn't want to go through all the process of indeed people just pressing the button and and yeah and um and what do you call it, applying for it mm -hmm. yeah because that can create a, a a tidal wave of resumes and then that makes it even harder to find the right person because you get overwhelmed with thousands of resumes and, and then what well, how do we quickly go through this? Maybe you shouldn't quickly go through it. Yeah, that, could, that, that, that yeah. having a ton of resumes can be a sign of a mistake you made. Not yeah. that, oh, it's really cool. I got a ton of resume. Yes, every everything that isn't working out the way you would like, whether it's too little or too many, is your fault. Mm -hmm. It's your fault as the hiring manager. There's something wrong. There's something that you didn't invest in strongly enough or just missed that is causing for you to get the wrong list of people. Okay. Now, how so could you build a formal, do you build a formal job description internally and take from that to advertise? Or do you build the advertisement first and make it as tight to what you're going to build in the job description second, detailed um, internal job description? The advertisement is the only version that matters for me. Okay. Uh, because that's who we are mm -hmm. both internal and external so yes there's internal ones that people might create differently but i create them exactly the same because mm -hmm. i want my existing people to be excited about the role too like if they're looking for hey what's my next step i don't want them to read the boring internal one like i want them to read the one that we're putting out there that people are we're getting a ton of really good people to click on like i want them to have that same excitement about oh this is how we're hiring this yeah. is what we're looking for. Like this, this is exciting. So I don't like to, to corporatize it or whatever it might, might be, but yeah, that's a, that's a tough thing that not a lot of people are willing to do, but you have to realize you're consistently selling to your existing people, just like you are to everyone else that's out there trying to find. Oh, they're going to look for it, right? They're going to look about yeah. us. They're going to, then they're going to see if something you know, they're checking out, see if their position's being advertised, if they're a little worried about their job. <laughs> Um, they're seeing what else is out there. Absolutely. That happens. I mean, people don't realize that people are looking. Yeah. And, and it's more likely that they're going to share it. So if your job description out there is good, your team members are going to reshare it. Cause they'll be like, yeah, this is, this is who we are. This is like, I want people that fit this role rather than, oh, it's a checklist of if you have these 74 things, please apply. Um, then that, that, right. That doesn't tell you who's going to come walking through that door and sit next to you for the next five years. Yep. Great cool. points. Great points. Okay. Moving on uh, mm -hmm. to the recruiting process and whether it's an internal recruiting team or external, it's pretty much the same. And this is another area where people are insanely lazy. And the analogy that I came up with as I was thinking about this talk is what so many people do is they send a job description over and the recruiter will talk about, hey, what's the company culture? And maybe you send them the link to the culture part of your website and that's it. <laughs> so that's effectively um, asking someone to paint a picture of your kids and telling them, hey, I've got a 18 year old daughter, a 16 year old son and a 13 year old son. Yeah. And then they come back with a painting and it doesn't look anything like your kids. And then you get mad at the painter. It's not the painter's fault. It's not the recruiter's fault. It's your <laughs> fault for not providing them clarity on, hey, this is what I'm looking for. I used one recruiter and one, and one recruiter only. Out, and then I also did recruiting myself for, for at one company for 13 years. Yeah. And I sat that person down. That person understood the culture, the tendencies, the needs, understood me. And he was always in the company, walking around, talking to people he placed, because I wanted to make sure he completely understood mm -hmm. before he started sending pe people to me. Yep. In my career, there have been three recruiting account executives that really understood me. And part of that was because I invested in them, which we're going to talk about. But mm -hmm. I could call them after years of doing this with them, just like David said, and say, okay, I need three senior developers. And they'd say, okay, so this is a normal Josh hire, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd say, yes. 
And it got to the point where if they sent a resume over, I didn't even look at it because I knew that they did such a good job in making sure this is the right fit that I said, all right, you send them over, let's go. Let's set up a phone screen and be ready to rock and roll because they were that good. But that took a lot And you're paying 20%, so you better darn well do the work in advance. Make them earn their money. Exactly. That's a so we're going to talk point. about how to make that happen. Um, I I invest very heavily with every new role that comes out, and I will spend hours with the account executive and their recruiting team talking about that. I've even done like lunch and learns at a company talking about, okay, this is our culture. This is how we operate. This is what we're trying to do. This is why the company's future is so bright. We just got this investment or something and we're investing here. And oh, by the way, we're going to be hiring six new teams over the next, you know, 18 months or whatever it is, just to give them the full picture to understand me and the type of person that I'm looking for and, and where I have found those in the past, what those triggers are, what I look for in a resume, all of that stuff, trying to get as much of what I'm looking for into their brains. And you know what? Recruiters have choices. Yep. They have lots of clients. They're going to choose where they invest their time and and their energy and focus. And if you've invested in them and you've given them as much clarity as they need to confidently go find that next person, they're going to spend more time. They're going to prioritize your roles versus others where some hiring manager just mailed it in. Well, you know, too, Josh, that, that yeah. position, that job is so hard because you have to work on things that like, may never materialize. Right. And you have to work on things that there's competition that they could just pick somebody else. And I love how you're presenting this and the fact of you connect with them, they become such an extension of you. They will put the work in because they have a higher confidence level that work will turn into money for them. Yep. Exactly. Because they there's a lot of competition for roles. They have a lot of customers. So say they find the best developer they've ever found. Yep. Where are they, who are they going to tell first? Is That's it, you want. yeah, is it that person that really invested in setting them up to succeed? Or is it that company that sent them a description and a link and said, you know, we need five by um, end of day tomorrow or whatever, right? Like that's, that's not where people are going to invest their time because the return isn't there. So, okay, you've done a good job. You've sat down with them. You've reached the point where they feel confident going out and selling you and your company on what the future is and finding the best. They feel like they can find the best and get them back to you. So you're going to get a handful of resumes that, that uh, come over early in the process. I want them to, to be less restrictive about sending things over because I want us to learn together on what a resume really looks like. So I say open the floodgates to start so that I can give you feedback and thoughts on if you thought this person was good, but you weren't sure, send it over and let's talk it through because maybe your instinct was was right. And as we talk it through, then they get more confident, like, okay, I get it. But too many people just, they get a resume, it doesn't look good and they send back no. Or not now, would you have them talk to the person first before they sent resumes to you? Or are you open to getting resumes uh, then from there setting up the process? Uh, at the start, I want to focus on the resumes and make sure that they are reading them effectively and are able to find the points that I'm looking for. Because what I look for is I look for someone that has driven change. Mm-hmm. That's a key piece. So in a resume, what I want to see is when I got out of the company, we operated like this. When I left, we did this. And here's the role that I played. So helping them understand that. But you have to invest more than just the couple hours you spent up, up front. But with each recruiter, making sure that they understand what a good resume looks like, because that helps them be more efficient and more confident. So every time someone sends a resume over, if you are not responding with why this person is a great fit, or why this person is not a good fit, then you're being lazy and you're wasting time and you're probably not going to get better candidates over the long haul. So it's not just saying, hey, this person isn't a fit because of X, Y, and Z, but it's really accentuating, okay, I love this person because of ABC and helping them 
and say, oh, okay, that's a thing that gets Josh excited. All right, let's really start and focus there. Right. So it's not always just like, no, because a lot of people just say no and never say anything more, but it's no. And these are the reasons why, again, that helps all of the recruiters there start to narrow in and be more efficient and effective. Again, if you're getting paid to deliver and you're working with a customer that's going to help you be efficient, you're going to probably spend more time working on their jobs. So that's so what are some resume hacks you got, like things you look for. Like for instance, one I look for is I like longevity. So if someone's hitting certain cues, I want to see longevity. Now, everybody is entitled to a couple of oopses. I call them oopses, right? Because that's fun. That means you tried something out, didn't quite work out. So if I see three or four oopses, then I want to I want recruiter go back and talk to them before and i want to know why so that's one of my you know things that my hacks anything you have i'm on the other side uh, oh you like I, the oopses i call them oopses. well i don't like oopses what i like is someone that has a clear direction on where they want to go and mm-hmm. if they don't feel like they're getting it there that they're willing to take action Okay. And change the scenery. Now, of course, there's the ridiculous side where they're in a different job every like quarter. Like I'm not looking yeah. for that, but I'm I am. No, okay. it's a great perspective. Yeah, just uh, and again that it's role specific, right? So if you're looking to hire a junior dev or somebody that's got a couple of years experience out there, I'm okay with that. As you get to more broader roles where responsibility is more broad and that having that um, consistent feeling over the years is really going to pay off. And of course, that's a different thing, but I spend most of my time trying to hire devs. Um, and that's a, it doesn't scare me off like it does a lot of people. No, but it makes total sense. You know, it gave me another perspective to look at, especially yeah. to see if this, you know, especially if there's a real understanding of why they left well, right. you probably can read it in the resume, but if the recruiter can say that, that's an interesting point. Yeah, they got the confidence to be able to go out and look for things that work for them, and you know, not just mousily, mousily if that's a word, you know, just kind of hide in the company they're at and not try to push forward. Great point. Right. And and that's a huge part of the profile of who I'm looking for because I I try to hire collaborative problem solvers and to be collaborative you have to be willing to like speak up when it's maybe a scary spot or it puts you at risk so i'm always looking for folks that are willing to identify what a move could be try it put themselves out there and maybe it worked maybe it didn't but hey at least they were willing to put their chips on that table now now for those that are looking for a job that's a great way to pitch that say if you have have had a couple of you know one years back to back okay articulate you know right what you were doing there you know to drive things forward and you know the fact that you intentionally are looking to do new things to be part of change and if it's not there you intentionally look for that great point yep yep so there's also some like personal bias there because that's how i shaped my my career so i admit that you know that definitely sneaks in so um (laughs) but also (laughs) I have learned over the years to not hire uh, copies of Josh. That's a bad plan. Yes. yes. It just doesn't work because the diversity, the diversity of thinking and approach to how you would solve a problem just makes you get to the best answer so much faster. Uh, So that's a, that's a mistake I made early in my career was hiring little copies of Josh. And then, you know, we only know how to solve one problem because we all have the same tool and that's not. And you all get excited. You think that's the right way to do it. Yeah, no exactly. Conflict. Right. And you're yeah. like, this is great. Then it doesn't work, yeah. right? Yep, exactly. And that's <laughs> that's bad news. The kiss of death is when you have no conflict and you're like, oh, yeah. there's probably something wrong here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, which is why I'm looking for folks that will uh, create the conflict. Not that it's bad, but they're willing to say like, no, yeah. um, this isn't where I want to go. And I'm willing to put my neck out there and make a change. Okay. And, and um, having the confidence to make the change. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so that feedback loop I talked about with, with the resumes can never stop. So every step along the way of the hiring process. So David asked about, okay, so do you have them talk to this person first before they send over the resume? After we get through that 
resume period of we're on the same page. I feel like they are really getting it. Then it's that point of like, okay, cool. You got it. So now look at the resume. You don't have to bounce it off me. Um, talk to them. And then what I'm looking for is I'm looking for you to send me an email of why I should talk to this person. Yeah, don't, that's, what, don't, that's how my recruiter did it at the end yeah, of the day. Don't, don't let them be lazy and just send a resume over. And okay. then you have to debug and figure out like, why did you send this? Like, why is this person different than anybody else? So what I set up is like, okay, how is this person meeting the things that I'm looking for, the core values that I'm looking for? Show me that again, because that's what we're paying you for. I am paying for you to bring the best people to me and for you to just throw a resume at me and say, Hey, what do you think? Like, that's not, there's no value there. I can go find that. That's exactly it is right. like, Hey, I have done the work and Josh, I really believe in this person. I want to put them in front of you because they do this. They work like this. They operate like that. They're looking for this to happen. And I think it's a really great fit. So, but to be able to do that, you have to have invested up front to make sure they have clarity on what that looks like. If you don't invest up front, then that's not fair for you to push back and say, listen, you got to tell me why this person is a great fit for us. And they're probably like, I have no idea what a great fit for you is because you never told yep. us. Um, so it all has to start at the beginning with, all right, here's the clarity on who we are and who we want to be and how we're going to hire. Um, so if you don't invest there, then your likelihood of, of success drops over time with every step in that that pipeline. So um, now have again, you used internal recruiters versus yeah. external recruiters? And have you seen a difference? Using the same Josh philosophy, which is nope. great. Like I'm going to manage these recruiters, whether it's yeah. internal or external, you can get the same results. Yeah. The, the only difference that I've seen as I, I thought about that question is I was prepping for this talk was with external recruiters, you have to invest more in context about the culture and the company because they don't live it every day. Yeah. An internal recruiter is is a part of HR. So think about what their peers are working on, what they're talking about when they have a department meeting, all of the things, like it's going to be culture centric there. So they have a much more clear idea and vision of where it's going. So that's the only difference I've ever found. And internal recruiters respond just as well as external folks do with this process because guess what your company is probably hiring more than one role so they're going to feel more confident about going after your role they're going to invest time because you've invested in them yeah and they it, know that yeah they, they, just, they can get some completion yeah exactly and 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 that's always like one of the things that recruiters light up about is when somebody talks about this amazing hire that they were yeah. a part of. That's what fires them up. So that's what they want to do. They want to find that magical fit. But again, if you're asking them to just throw darts at a wall with a blindfold on, then that's hard for them to feel successful. And when they feel successful, because again, you set them up to win when you do that, it's going to pay off a bunch in that long run of hiring people. Now, here's one I throw at you, and I'm not sure we can, you can say it doesn't fit, but um, that's fine. We'll go on to something else. Is During the recruitment process, I used to get people that were awesome, but wrong timing. Mm -hmm. So I would actually park parking lot them and build a relationship with them and pay the recruiter if, if it's yeah. external within the time period. But in two cases, ended up with really high quality folks because one, I, 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 they got in, then they built a relationship and continue that relationship until timing matched. Um, and, you know, and I think two is just being able to catch that and understand that, look, if you can find talent, sometimes it doesn't match. And it's good to, to have them off kind of like a, almost on a task board or a burn yeah. down chart or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Your thoughts on that? Have you ever done that? Or is that kind of outside uh, the process here for what you're thinking about? Yes. And it backfired on me. So I move heaven and really? earth to get that higher in as soon as possible. When I find... A oh, no, really I didn't push it. I just waited until it naturally became the time. Yeah, I push it. I you push it. I say, I say, hey, we found this person. I Number one, the sooner we can get them in here, the better we're going to be. Number two... 
this person undoubtedly has people just like us chasing them across the country now because remote is a thing. So I need to find a way to free up an FTE or free up whatever the funding model is to find that, to find a way to get that person in there because I have done that where I put them on the waiting shelf and then something happened uh, either in my control or not in mine. It didn't matter, but something happened and I wasn't able to get them on board. And that like crushed me because I knew how good that person was. Yeah. And so I kind of vowed, not kind of, I, I vowed to myself of like, Hey, if you find a great person, get them in the door somehow, some way, because the return on that investment over time is amazing. Um, so that, that again, that's a hard thing to do. Maybe you don't control your budget. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe it's a super tight year for your company or something like that. But I still will scrape and claw and do everything I can to find a way to get that person in because hiring as much as I have, I recognize the rarity of that and the importance to me and how I like to hire with getting those really, really great people. Makes sense. So I got burned once, so I'm like, I'm not going to let that happen again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My situation was timing. They weren't ready. And yeah. so I wanted to make sure that I kept that relationship up so that, you know, when they were ready, which they all both, both became ready, yeah. they yeah. could come in. They, oh, they both turned into fantastic hires. Um, it's just yeah. it's just weird I, how that works out. You can find some of the timing isn't right. Um, you don't want to force them into something they're not yet comfortable with, especially because I was doing a lot of, you know, a little bit more early stage stuff with some mm-hmm. some a little bit of risk. Usually they would have to take a little bit of a less salary as they're pivoting into a new role or a new industry. Um, I that's my thing. I love to take chances on people that high potential. I used to call it potential energy versus kinetic energy. So mm-hmm. my 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 thing was lo- always looking for the person with potential energy that could yeah. blow it yeah. out of the water, given a Agreed. shot. Agreed. I I have not. I just think I'm not as skilled as you are with uh, keeping people on like like keeping them warm over here. No, that's just uh, different right skill here. sets. Yeah, yeah, it's different techniques you use. Yeah. Like I yeah. like your technique because you're like I'm gonna get this person in. They want yeah. it. I want it. I'm gonna shove them in. Because I got so many other things to worry about. I'm not, I can't manage this going forward. Yeah. For me, I just had, I had a situation where I could backlog some folks and then play with things and, you know, keep connected with them and then ultimately pull them at the right time. Yeah. And, and that's not one of my stronger skills. So (laughs) I don't uh, like, unless I have a teammate that's really good at it, then that's likely not going to happen, which stinks because there's times that like, I wish I could have made that happen, but it just, it's not a strong suit of mine. So. So I no, I get it. I yeah. mean, the, the funny, the thing on this that you talk so well about is the ownership and management and partnering with the recruiter. Mm-hmm. Some people just see them as a tool that they whip and just give me what I want. I got five of you. Just don't bother me. Yes. You know, and it's just like, wow, here's a whole other perspective that will definitely give you much bigger return. There's no yeah, doubt. And, yeah. And, and, you know, you will win more with this approach. You will find more talented people you will find more enthusiastic people and then you keep that that train rolling and keep hiring people like that your culture transforms it might already be good but it gets even better because now that's the norm that's who we hire that's how we operate that's what we look for and then word starts to get out and people start coming to you and you become a destination job. That's the proudest moment I've ever had was here in Raleigh. We actually became a destination job and we didn't have to find people. We just had to post a job and then people would, you know, let us know that, that they wanted to come and work with us. And that just changed the whole game. But that again, that only happened because my entire recruiting team, both internal and external with that company and my directors and the people that were part of the hiring process, we all were on the same page, but that does not happen when you go the lazy route, which is what David talked about, where it's just like, get out of my way, only send me good resumes, please don't bother me, all that stuff. Like, And I got so four other of you, I got four other yeah. of you up there. Yeah, exactly. So then I'm like, well, shit, I'm not gonna spend time doing that, right? Yeah. Um, so, so that, so if you invest here, you're going to win, you're going to beat the competition that's out there. You're, 
just your life is going to get easier. <laughs> it's so, I mean, absolutely. When you start talking, when you start digging into it like that, you can, you can definitely see that scenario. So job description. Yes. Criticality. Important. Um, because... Any, any last summary on the job description side of it, whether it's um any specific verbiage, any specific structure. Um, and then remember folks, this isn't the internal document. Remember Josh is talking about how are you advertising that out to the rest of the world? The thing I always hold on to is this is the first contact a talented person has with your department and your company. So take advantage of that. Show them that you are special. Of course, I have the, I have the required, you know, preferred, blah, blah, blah. But I don't use that language. Right. I don't use those words of you're an amazing fit if you have these things. And also, I also start the whole listing off with we aren't a company that hires on a checklist. If you're great, we're going to hire you. You might not be able to check off all 15 things that are on this sheet, but that's okay. If you think you're great, let us know and we'll figure that out with you and we'll hire you. So I try not to turn people away with this like, oh my gosh, I don't have that. Because to your point, investing in potential energy, there's a lot out there. So how do I get that person to click the button, uh, even though they might not feel like, well, I've never done that. Well, that's okay. If you think yeah, we'll teach you. If you're smart, it, we'll teach it. you. Yeah. I'm yeah, not, exactly. I mean, I could teach anybody how to do something. Yeah. I can't teach people how to get things done. I mean, that's the big thing I've been pushing out there more and more is, I want to find people that can get things done. Exactly. And it, that's really what you're digging into too. And I liked it because now this is one of the weaknesses I had. I was never really a big, okay, let's, let's really put the advertisement out there. Occasionally the marketing team would do this really well. So the marketing team had, this, had their cool culture and, you know, they had their cool environment. And so they, they had some of the shtick that they put in their job yeah. offers and that were, I mean, the job descriptions and it worked. They got people, they yeah. got people fired up who wanted to come, you know, work with them. But I, I, I see the merit in this. Now let's go back to the recruitment side for a second. Mm -hmm. Do you go after, do you ask your recruiters to go after people who are currently employed or do you care? Uh, I don't care. You don't care. Yeah. Right. Uh, because just because they're at a company doesn't mean they're not looking, doesn't mean they're not looking to get out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I wouldn't, well, I was going to say, I wouldn't want somebody that wouldn't be willing to say, you know, I don't, I don't think this is the right time because I've been there. Right. And I've mm -hmm. done that. And I said, Hey, I don't think this is the right time. And turns out I realized, you know, a month later I was wrong. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's, um, if you want to find the best, you got to look everywhere. You got to look everywhere. One of the things that I get asked a lot that I have never had a really good answer for from a recruiting team is what companies are you looking to hire people from? Oh, that's and, an interesting one. Yeah. That? And I've I never, have a really good answer for that one. Yeah. I don't have any. I'm looking for oh, potential energy. That's I'm, good. Yeah. I, I don't I actually I think experience in some cases too heavy brings baggage. Yeah. So if I'm going to hire someone with deep experience in the industry that I am in or I'm interviewing, I want to make sure that they can learn and learn fast and not bring that baggage to the table. Yeah. That was always my big thing. I hate yeah, which baggage. Is, yeah, which is probably why I never really had an answer for that. Like I I seriously spent time thinking about that, but 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 I didn't feel like there was one company out there that had a thing and a group of people that uh, like we have to have. It was a diverse you're looking for a per you're an individualist you're looking for a person mm -hmm. and that person has to have certain criteria about their character their work ethic you know their intelligence level and i think that's what people forget they don't showcase that they can learn fast I, they don't showcase that you know where they made those character decisions where they you talked about it too you said, i want to see where you change things yeah. Where you disrupted, but did so successfully without being a jackass, you know, mm -hmm. those are the people that get things done. I, I think, you know, I love the how you presented that as it relates to when you're talk talking to the recruiters and teaching them, here's other ways you find how people get things yeah. done. And two points, one about the resumes, 
writing is um, unfortunately people aren't great at it. Like I have a really good friend that I worked with a while back that um, wants to move on from a company and he hasn't written a resume in quite a while. And he sent it over to me. I'm like, this, this doesn't tell me anything. Like this tells me the things you're supposed to do in your job. <laughs> Anybody in that role should do those things. Like that doesn't separate you as like, oh, this person is really, you know, it's just like, hey, someone gave you a job description and you just did it. And I, yeah. but I know, I know you're not that person, but this resume doesn't tell it. So make sure that it does. And the same thing with your job descriptions, right? You don't want to put that out there and have it be like, oh yeah, this is just like every other company uh, because you'll get, you'll get people that like that, but you probably aren't looking for that. And then the last point I want to make about the recruiting side of the house is you are creating a challenge for the recruiters because it is much more difficult to find the things that David talked about, to find those personality traits in people through resumes, given what I just talked about, like some really talented people aren't great at writing resumes. Exactly. And, that's right. the, most of them are. That's yeah. the thing. It's like, yeah. you want yeah. to find that cognitively diverse person who can disrupt, but yeah, they don't have the skills to do that. That That's. Yeah. So how do you go out there and find them? How do you teach your recruiters to, you know, dig under this stone and look under here and look for this? And that's the, the winning strategy is the, from my perspective, is your study on your conversation around educating yeah. your recruiters. Yes, because while the resume will tell a story, it's not necessarily the real story or the whole story. That's why I personally, when people ask for a resume, I say, go to my LinkedIn because you're going to get a greater feel for who I am as a person than you will within a resume. So I can send you a resume, but it it's a resume. Right? Resume. Um, There's only so yeah. much you can say. There's right. only so much you can say. Right. Great point on the LinkedIn side. And I hope everybody here is looking at least at the LinkedIn pages of anybody that got to a second stage. I mean, if you're, if you're not doing that, that's that's that you're hurting yourself. Um, the adage I use, Josh, is hire, hire tough to manage easy. Mm -hmm. So that's a big, like, I try to push that on anybody that's around me. I said, look, make it hard, make it hard for them to get a job here. And they, they feel that they're like, oh my God, I got, I went, I went through seven interviews and they're not stupid interviews. You're going through the process, you're matriculating, you know, you're staying connected with them, but it, wow, I got it. I got this job, man. Yeah, you should yeah. see what they put me through. They put me through a gauntlet. Yeah. Your, your saying is much nicer than mine. Mine is a bit more blunt and direct of <laughs> higher, slow, fire, fast. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. See, my hope is I don't have to. You yeah. should hire fast. Yeah. And fire fast. Excuse me. Hire. Yeah. Fire fast. I just don't like doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but you're I don't right. Either. I don't yeah. Either neither one of us. But that that's yeah. right. You've got to do both. And yeah. here's the thing about fire fast that people don't realize. It's better for them. Mm-hmm. It's better yeah. for them. I mean, it's just are, so much more. They are positive. not happy. They're not happy. You not know, there's a probably a whole session we could do about that. Uh, Absolutely. And I've got Absolutely. some horror stories about. Oh man, the first time I ever fired somebody, it was. Oh, it's horrible. It's so bad. So I had to bad. do it at 19 years old. I had to fire. I was assistant kitchen manager, Santa Fe Cafe in college. I had to fire one of one of my buddies because the kitchen yeah. manager was too much of a chicken, and yeah. it sucked. And then yeah. the rest has been. A, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, so recognize that you're making it harder on them because they likely have a lot of clients or customers that give them a checklist. So they can probably feed it into some system they have that's going to go scan a bajillion resumes and return them 500 that check all of the boxes. And they can hand that to that person because that's all they care about. Does it check the boxes? Cool. Done. You make it harder. They are going to have to invest more in reading the resume, understanding who that person is, asking yeah. different, tougher questions during the initial screen, right? So there's but they trust things. you more, but you're going to yes. give them business. That's yeah. the give and take here. See, I love this model because recruiters want that connection. You're their yeah. customer. Yep. If you're spending time with them, they're like, oh man, if I learn this, Josh, I know Josh hires. He mm -hmm. hires every job he goes to. Mm -hmm. I, I had, I used the same recruiter for uh, to put bring people into three different companies. And he did a phenomenal job in all three companies. And, yep. and so, yeah, you, 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 you build that relationship. You've got someone that knows you and knows what you're looking for, understands the puts and takes. It's well worth their time to do that. And Absolutely. if the recruiter doesn't want to do it, they're not worth your time. Right.
Agreed. Go to another company. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, anything else, sir, you want to share? No questions out there for the group. Any questions, no. thoughts, comments? Going Ooh, once. We're hand raised. We got a hand raised. We'll put oh, your you question in raised? the chat. Yeah. Okay. Terrell Hodgson. Hod, 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. Terrell, yeah, you can speak. What do you got? Hey, how you doing, guys? Uh, I, <clears throat> I have a few points actually. And uh, first, I, I apologize. I missed the first 20 minutes of this because uh, I have sitting on a meeting. But uh, so I don't know what you covered during that time frame. But first, let me just say this is excellent content. I mean, really excellent content. And I'm glad you guys are doing this for you, of course. And I, I appreciate you putting this on. Very informative and very useful material. And we're like, I'm going right now through a process of hiring a fairly key position. And uh, we're not putting forth the necessary effort that's required to, to do this. And, and <clears throat> a lot of the tips you've given us, I wish I'd had a week ago. <laughs> but uh, for, well, at least say, it's only a week ago, right? It's better than a month ago. <clears throat> That's right. First, I would say that my experience, uh, I, I've never been in an organization that used a recruiter, <clears throat> at least not a dedicated recruiter. Uh, I was in the Army for a while. We had to hire uh, government civilians periodically. And there's, there's a very regimented bureaucratic process you have to go through for that. And so <clears throat> you can't, it's difficult to recruit for, for something like that. In my current organization, we just, <clears throat> we just don't have a recruiter on hand. Mm -hmm. What I found though, that really, that if you want this to be a success, you have, it has to be a deliberately planned uh, and executed uh, process. Uh, and where I found the best success is, uh, and, and the bottom line is everybody involved is gonna have to put forth a lot of time and effort uh, to find the right, <clears throat> the right candidate. And what I found works best is for the unit lead or the division lead puts the thought into it, necessary, the necessary thought into it ahead of time when he puts together the, the job description, has it posted, <clears throat> it's designed to bring out the right qualities that you're looking for. And yep. then there's this, this, the next step is in the resume screening process. He puts together a rubric uh, for the, the hiring committee uh, explaining, this is what we're trying to draw out of these resumes here. And this is how you score it. Uh, and this is what you should be looking for. Uh, and this, a similar sort of situation with a grading rubric for the interviews. Uh, and there needs to be a subjective element to each of those phases. Yeah, so just a note, like an, ask, Terrell, like an asterisk that said, oh, the, it, it, it's something special here with a couple notes or yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah <laughs> you always should have that because you just never know that something's not going to fit the rubric because i there's certain rubrics i would never fit yeah i mean you're exactly when you're talking about potential energy that's the sort of thing that's going to be difficult to, to draw out of a resume you, you can draw it out of an, an interview and uh, but there needs to be that subjective element there to uh <clears throat> to identify it you know uh, yeah, and also you have to know the questions to ask to pull some of that out. That's another right, thing. They have to be carefully crafted to draw those things out. And, yes. uh, and it takes time and effort and thought to, to put that together. That's why it needs to be a really deliberately planned uh, effort. And you have to teach some people that each interview is special. Like one of the mistakes that happens if you start getting into an interview mill process, you can forget that each person special. You got to coach the people on the team. This is special. This person's special. Right. Give it the time. It's so worth your time. It's so worth your time. Yep. And, uh, you know, back to your point about uh, uh, hiring slow and firing fast or, uh, or making it hard for the people to get into the job. I agree that what you want is for it to be easy for the right person to get into the job. So you need to be selective in your in your process right from the, the very start with the and that starts with the job posting and uh, it needs to be selective and it needs to be designed to draw out the right uh, right qualities uh, in the candidate that you're looking for. You know, it's funny you say it, Terrell, and it goes back to what Josh was saying, too. I've had people that went through really tough interview processes who came in second and felt great about it. Well, wow. Because, oh, my gosh, you know, I got all the way there. You know, they want the job. But, my gosh, man, I, I was put through the gauntlet and I was number two. And then, of course, everybody ultimately gets a job. So mm -hmm. let's just start there. I mean, the, the, just because they came in second place here because they did so well, they'll come in first place somewhere else. But that gauntlet is, is in some cases, somebody puts a badge, badge of honor even if they came in second place. Yeah, that's, that's a good experience. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. You learn. Yep. This is Any other comments or thoughts, Terrell? Good luck during the process. But, yes, the no, job thanks. description, the rubric. I love the idea of the rubric for the, for the, you know, for the position description, the rubric for the interview, but that subjective element to make sure that you, you, you are looking for things outside the box. Uh, thanks a lot for putting this together, guys. I, uh, I appreciate the, uh, the time and effort you put into this. Oh, no problem. Love the engagement, man. Love it. All right. Anyone else that has comment question, raise your hand. I can let you speak. 
which is kind of cool on the web seminar. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. You finish us out. You close us out, brother. Yeah. Hey, like I'm just saying, if there's anybody else out there that is stuck in a position or needs some help with hiring, you know, there's a guy, this guy, <laughs> you can go to Kazi, K-A-Z-I dot I-O and uh, we can chat. We can figure some things out. So uh, hiring again, like, so I do a lot of coaching across the board, but hiring is when I get most excited and I don't know what the thing is in me that gets me most excited about, but I love it. So happy to help anybody out there that uh, is struggling a little bit. All right, great. That's how we'll end it. Folks, thank you much so much for your time. You can find Josh on LinkedIn. Um, and again, Josh, thank you. We got part you two coming out May 2nd. So don't hesitate to join us then and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Josh. Good stuff. You bet. See you, everybody.